upon each face And I know that feel the presence of the Lord Sweet Holy Spirit Sweet Heavenly Ministry.org website and download the bulletin for today under the worship tab and follow along with us to have the words of the songs and the order of worship. There's also an extra page there with our communion litany for today. And if you are taking communion with us at home today, be sure to get your bread together. We are only taking bread as communion of the one. And um, then make yourself a nice worship space. Add, light a candle and have a, have a nice clear space where you can focus on the litany of communion and our, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Tuesday for our Liberty Pole viewers, the Liberty Pole board will be meeting. Um, and then tomorrow we are going to start a virtual vacation Bible school. And this will continue to be available on our Facebook page, but at 9 o'clock each morning we will be um, offering clues every day of the week for a Bible hunt and a picture hunt that the kids can look up verses in the Bible and they either take a picture or draw a picture of what they see in the in the verse and then we'll collect those and the kids will receive a gift bag of, of um, crafts and Bible re-enhancement things so um, we're really looking forward to kids from all over to participate in this. So, um, oh, I said 9, it's at 10. 10 o'clock we'll be uploading the, uh, the, the clues each day. So, with that, I'm going to make sure I don't miss anything. Yes, Jeff is starting to prepare for his time in the pulpit in a couple of weeks. I will be away at class, and that means I better get my homework done. And Jeff is going to be covering here and at, um, at New Hope. The other note to make is that the Liberty Pole Church will be restarting, but not until August 30th. That's what their opening committee decided, that they would wait until the end of the month to make that, that, uh, that change. So that's all. So let's stand for the greeting of the collective. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And our centering thoughts. As the crowds followed Jesus, eager to be filled with hope, we come today seeking nourishment for our souls. God's blessing is so abundant 
that there is more than enough to go around. Amen. And we go back to an old familiar song, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling.
started their new journey with the Lord. And we had a beautiful service here on Friday for, um, for Nancy and then a service at the farm for Marty and the Lutheran Church in Viroqua had a service for Sonia. It was just, um, it's just a, a difficult time. And we remember the families. We remember Gary and Alma. And uh, we remember the, the loved ones, the friends and family of all of these who will have a time of real transition now as they, they try to make their life again in a loss of people who were important to them. So for those, we pray. And we pray for Gloria and for uh, Marla as they're continuing to confront the cancers in their body. And hopefully that things are, things are holding for both of those ladies. Um, just so many things on our hearts and minds right now. And uh, kids going back to school and coronavirus and there's just a lot on our mind. But there's also lots of reasons to pray, aren't there? So I give praise for the butterflies and the lightning bugs and the birds and the way that nature presents itself to us and, uh, and the way that I see the joy in your faces and to see, see you gathered here today to celebrate and worship the Lord. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, the days march on and the summer is drawing to its slow conclusion. School is getting ready to start again. We're just not sure how. We have been living in months of uncertainty. We're not really certain what today will bring or tomorrow will bring, but what we do know for sure, Lord, is that your love is ever-present. Your mercy and grace are always there for us. We give thanks for the life of Nancy and Marty and Sonia, who have been so much a part of this community. And for the many ways that each of them influenced and brought joy to others. And none of them, none of these ladies were, were well known outside of this area, but Lord, their influence here continues. The love that they instilled in family continues. It is just as you wanted us to do for others. So today, Lord, as we, as we study the word of Matthew and the story of feeding 5,000, we, we are overwhelmed that this could happen, but Lord, we know that one crumb can go a long way. Thank you for the miracles you put into our lives. Bless us, Lord, as we come with penitent hearts to receive your Holy Communion, your sustaining, nurturing bread of life, to be restored and renewed in the Spirit. Hear our prayers, O Lord. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen. Now we don't have any kids here right now, but I do want to share this brief word of a children's message because there's going to be kids watching at home. And I wonder if you ever had a dandelion in your yard. I mean like Holy cow, everybody has had a, a dandelion in their yard. And you know that sometimes in the past, 
They used to cultivate dandelions and have a whole yard of dandelions because they were, it's a valuable, it's, it's like a cash crop almost because you could eat the entire dandelion. You could make tea and, and wine with the, with the, the roots and the stems and salad with leaves. And there's just nothing bad about a dandelion. Except we don't like the way they look, do, they? do we? we? We like them to be uh, in, in one place away from us. But the dandelion, you know, it grows from a very tiny seed, doesn't it? And it doesn't take much for a single dandelion flower to explode and put dandelions all over. And that is very much the Word of God. One tiny parasol of a seed floats over to John, or floats to Robin, or to Jody, or to Angie, and suddenly they are a dandelion, and they share their seed. Seeds of faith. So next time you blow on a dandelion, that's just because, who hasn't blown on a dandelion? Okay. But let's just imagine how that is our faith that we are blowing. And we're sharing our message with others. It just takes a little tiny seed. And God does the rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. We continue with Spirit Song. <coughs> Verse 1 and 2. Yes. Please stand as you are able.
this is one of those, um, this is, it's really important that we understand the setting. This has just happened, this event's happened just right after Jesus has learned that his cousin John has been beheaded. So, um, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now there is a question that gets asked every day for as long as you are alive. Sometimes we ask ourselves, sometimes someone else asks us, and the answer is never the same, and the question alone, just by being asked, can cause us great angst. And the answer, when it's finally revealed, can be a source of pure delight, utter revulsion, or complete indifference. Of course, that question that we have all asked, or which we have been asked, is, what's for dinner? Now, I am sure that you thought that was going to be a much more heady question, didn't you? Yeah. But today, don't we have a lot of choices? We have infinite choices for meals. Our markets offer meats and vegetables from the farm next door or from somewhere halfway around the world. In our society, at least in our society, food is generally readily available. It's plentiful. And if for some reason you do not have food, our food pantry is overflowing right now. We have options of tremendous variety, but in our gospel reading today, the disciples have surveyed the landscape and are faced with a crowd of 5,000 men, besides the women and children, so the number of people assembled there might have been 10,000, 15,000 or more. And they're all asking, what's for dinner? The story is one of only two miracles that is recorded in all four Gospels. The people had followed Jesus to the wilderness. Even though Jesus has just heard that his, his cousin, John the Baptist, had been brutally killed, it's a time that the human side of Jesus would have wanted to be alone. But the scripture tells us that Jesus was moved to compassion by the people. And he taught and healed the sick. But the hour grew late and the disciples were concerned about the logistics of the situation. Their answer was practical. Send the people away. They're not our responsibility. Don't say that to Jesus. And the disciples did not suggest this because their motives were bad. On the contrary, they were... Really, they should be commended for their compassion. They, they were thinking of the needs of the people. And ministry requires compassion. But they looked at the problem and considered the regular way that people would obtain a meal when you are away from home. You buy it. So the crowd was not 5,000 or 10,000 hungry people for the disciples. This was 5,000 problems they couldn't solve. They saw the crowds and they saw their inadequacy. 
Somehow they forgot that the Son of God was standing right there with them. You know, we're like those disciples, I think. We are quick to point out what we cannot do. We're quick to talk about what we don't have, quick to tally up our resources and say, no, I don't have enough to accomplish that. I don't have money to give. I'm not good at speaking to someone else. I can't sing. I've had disadvantages growing up. I'm alone. I'm, I'm just a woman. I'm just an old man. I'm just a child. I'm just whatever. But in the midst of all of this, Jesus could have said to his disciples, okay, I got this. But instead, don't you just love what Jesus says? You give them something to eat. If not, not we will give them something to eat. He says, you do it. Now, if I were a disciple, I probably would have had a snappy retort to say, Jesus, are you kidding? How am I going to do that? I guess I still do that sometimes. It was customary in that day, though, to bring some food with you when you traveled because traveling was mostly on foot or wagon or sometimes a donkey. It was slow going and there were unexpected challenges along the way that would delay your journey. Even what was considered to be a very short journey might have a problem along the way. And there were no fast food restaurants along the path. No myriad of places to stop. People would sew a pocket on the inside of their sleeve, of their robe, to carry possessions. So money would go in there and a loaf of bread or some other food or other supplies. That's where their pocket was. But in that crowd of thousands, anyone who had food that day did not step up to share, excepting for the boy that was identified in John's account who had carried the bounty of five loaves and two fish. I'm going to assume that the boy had been tasked with carrying the food for the family. And he just gave it over to these strangers. And then, of course, we know what happened. We just don't know how it happened. But here's what we know. And because my early career, my very early career, was in technical writing, so I tend to put things into flowcharts and steps. Step one, Jesus looks to heaven. Step two, he blesses this small amount of food. Step three, he breaks the loaf. Step four, the disciples distribute. Now, the fact-based technical writer in me wants to know what happens in step five. How did all that food multiply? And this is where we write in step five. A miracle happens. Some say the miracle that day was that people's hearts were moved to share what they had with them. Maybe that happened. And of course, whenever a hardened heart is made generous, that is a miracle. And maybe you could think of some other rational or logical ex explanation for what happened, but the fact is how 5,000 people were fed is not important at all. So we're just going to accept that and go on to step six. Everyone ate and was satisfied, and then step seven, they gathered up 12 baskets of food. The act of gathering the leftovers is a little bit perplexing to me as well. We don't know what they did with those 12 baskets of food, and we don't know how big the baskets were, and we can go on a long time about the numerology of number 12, 12 baskets of food and 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples. And there are just a whole ton of points that we could, could make about this miracle, but today we're going to just focus on that one thing, Jesus' instructions. The disciples were right when they said, we are helpless. They really can do nothing without Christ. We're no different. Over and over we find ourselves in situations where we feel helpless and inadequate. We cry out to heaven in desperation. Oh God, this virus. 
Oh God, the economy. Oh God, the government. Tell me what to do, Lord. Jesus' answer to the disciples was specific and direct. You give them something to eat. Now we know that very often when the disciples would ask a question, Jesus would either turn it around and ask them a question or he'd tell them a parable and they'd be sitting there scratching their heads. But in this case, he didn't tell them a parable. He didn't ask them anything. He gave them a specific instruction and proceeded to show them a parable. He showed the disciples and the 5,000 men and women that relying on Christ allows any little thing that we offer to be multiplied in such a way that anything, everything is indeed possible. Jesus wants us to completely rely on him. And we don't have to do anything except rely on him to be the source for everything that we attempt. Now, all too often, we conclude we are not enough, so we don't bother at all. Now, if Moses had taken that attitude, the Jews would still be in Egypt. David had attempted that, had adopted that opinion, then Goliath would still be terrorizing the Israelites. You just never know in advance what God may do, so don't rule out the possibility that a miracle is coming your way. When we utter our desperate cry to heaven, the response from Christ is always, I'm glad you asked. Whatever you are willing to offer, my child, I will make it go further, deeper, broader, higher than you could ever have imagined and make a profound difference in the world. We don't need a lot of anything to be able to accomplish God's work. We have a loaf of bread, we have a dollar, we have a smile, we have some time. We can make masks. We have a talent for this or that. We can plant a tiny seed, as long as it's not those ones that are from China. Jesus' instruction for us is to give it freely, to trust in faith, and then the miracle happens. When we offer our meager resources to God, we discover that the impossible is not. J. Hudson Taylor was a man of great faith whose missionary efforts more than a hundred years ago helped to open China to the gospel. Time and again he saw God do amazing things in the face of hopeless circumstances and murderous hostility. But reflecting on his experiences, he remarked that there are three stages in any work attempted from God for God. Impossible difficult, and done. Impossible, difficult, done. I'm encouraged by that because there are so many moments when we seem to be in, stuck in that impossible stage. But time and again, God shows us that impossibility is just stage one. And a mighty miracle is about to happen. Today we are going to share Holy Communion. The bread has, is blessed, it's broken, it's consumed, just as Jesus did with those loaves by the water. And as we eat our sacrament today, it's just a small bite. And it is a miracle for us. It is food for our faith. It is God giving us what we need to do His will. I give great praise to our Lord God for the many times that He inserts that miracle into our lives. All God is asking for in return is that we offer ourselves. We rely on the Lord. Just know that what we need will be provided. 
and the crumb we in turn offer will be multiplied for the next miracle for someone else. A miracle for the hungry who are around us, the tired and the worn out, the despairing, the depressed. They are indeed our responsibility. So we give them something. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are moving into communion and we are going to continue with Let Us Break Bread Together, verses 1 and 3, Tom. Okay? shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy 
Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us here and on these gifts of bread and wine. And make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory of the feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the cup of Christ. You don't know that this is not the table of the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are all welcome and invited to receive. Now, we've never done it this way before, have we? With everything already pre-distributed. But what I invite you to do now, do you have yours? Do you have bread? I'll do mine. Okay. What we do now is you can open your bag. Break that bread and take that piece of bread. And I say to you, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat and know that you are forgiven. called communion of the one. We can't separate Christ into little pieces. We reinforce our belief when we take the body and the blood. But they're the same. They're united in, in the body and blood of Christ. Amen. Because we do not pass the offering plate at this time. We do receive your offering at the back um, in the, in the uh, plates that are at the door. So I invite you to join with me in this offering prayer 
for the offerings that we will be giving. In gratitude for all that we have received from you, O Lord, we offer our tithes and gifts for the ministry of this church in the world which receives and for love and peace. Receive our gifts, gracious God, and multiply them to meet the needs of your world. Amen. Our closing hymn is, from the faith we sing, is Let Us Be Bread. We'll sing through that twice. Please stand as you are able. given that crumb. We have been given that faith. And our job is to be the dandelion and go out and spread it out into the world. So I pray that you would take that faith, take that crumb, take that bread and share it and fulfill the instructions. You give them something to eat. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, guide up.